All right, so first thing you need to work on today, just like always, is our math review. So we're on day two of math review five through eight. So you're gonna need to complete these on your own. And remember, they're gonna model just like these. So like number four is gonna be just like number one. There's a GCF, so like if you look, four, four, eight, these have a GCF of four. So take that out first and then factor. And then when we're factoring, we know we do our ACB table and then we split the middle. You pull out what's um, common, what the greatest common factor of each of my sets of parentheses are. And so then my three P minus five goes in the first one and then my P plus one goes in the second one. So you'll need to do these next four, five through eight, and then um, next class we'll check them for stars, but also next class when I'm going around checking your homework, I'm gonna check to see that you've done these four. So it'll be part of your homework assignment for next time. So make sure you complete these four. The next thing we're gonna talk about is the similarity test. So I have graded the similarity test. Your grades are already in gradebook, so you can check those. No, you cannot check them right now. Please do not ask the sub to have your cell phone back. So if you look, overall we did great. So fifth period, all A's and B's. Sixth period, all A's and B's. Seventh period, we did have one C, but it was a very high C. So overall we did great. You see our medians, 92, 93, 92. Now, if you are one of these question mark people, there are two in fifth and two in sixth, you need to go ahead and go to Scott's now if you haven't already, because you will want the full time to work on your test. All right, now, on your way in today, you should have picked up two things. So we have worksheet number one, um, using properties of tangents, and then we also have this green paper. So what we're doing this unit is circles, and there, as you can see, there are a lot of circle theorems, and so we're gonna keep track of this sheet the entire time, because by the end of it, it's gonna look like this. So each day, I'm gonna go through, and I'm gonna highlight the theorems, the new theorems that we're using, and I'm gonna give you all these extra notes that you can use whenever you're working on your assignments in class, um, and it's gonna be your big study guide for this test. <coughs> All right, so let's look at the theorems for today. So first thing we're gonna have, so I have my green highlighter here. Um, I'm gonna highlight theorem one and theorem two. So those are the first two theorems that I want to look at. All right, so theorem one says line M is tangent to circle Q if and only if M is perpendicular to the line QP. So what this is saying is that the radii are perpendicular tangents. Sorry, perpendicular to the tangents. So the radius will always make a perpendicular line with the tangents. Now, the big thing that you'll see with this question in particular is that we will use this with Pythagorean theorem. Because we can pick, you know, some point out here and then draw a nice little dotted line, and then we've created a right triangle. Now also they will ask you to show the line as tangent. And you will show the line as tangent by using the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. And remember we did that with the c squared box a squared plus b squared. And then if this is equal, so if this is equal, it's yes, it's a right triangle. Um, so yes, the line is tangent. And then obviously if it wasn't equal, then it would be no, the line is not tangent. All right, now let's look at theorem two. So theorem two says that if SR and ST are tangent segments, then SR is congruent to ST. So it's saying that these two guys are congruent to each other. So tangents from the same point are congruent. So I have my two tangent tangents, they both came from point S, and so those two are congruent. Now, what you will see on this one a lot is a circle inside of a polygon. So we'll do like a real simple one over here. We'll do a triangle, and then I'll put a circle inside this. So then like we have three points of tangency here and we like make them like real bold so we can see them really easily. 
And so then what they'll have you do a lot is, so this piece is equal to this piece. And then this piece is equal to this piece. And then this piece is equal to this piece. So they'll usually give you some missing pieces and then you kind of work your way around knowing that the two tangents coming from the same point are congruent. So the other theorems we learned were on the back. So we're going to skip to the back. So the last theorems, theorems four, uh, 14, 15, and 16. So I'm going to highlight those. All right, and so then on each of these, they tell you, like, using the letters what they are. But personally, I kind of think of them in words. So, like, on the first one, it's like AE times EB equals DE times EC. So, to me, this is always part times part equals part times part, where these are the two pieces of the first chord. And then these are the two pieces of the second chord. And now on the second one, so on this one, instead of chords, we now have two secants. So with the two secants, there's kind of different portions of them. So like this part, I would call like the outside. And then this would be the whole thing. So when I think of this theorem, it's always outside times whole thing equals outside times whole thing, where you do the outside and the whole of the first secant, and then you do the outside and the whole of the second secant. So outside times whole thing equals outside times whole thing. All right, and then on the last one, now on this one we have a tangent. And like this point at A, that's like a tangent point. And then we have a secant, so with the secant, I'm gonna have my outside times whole thing again. So then on this one, I always, so I feel like 15 and 16 kind of go together because it's like outside times whole thing. Well, on the tangent, the outside and the whole thing are the same thing because all of it's on the outside. So then this one is tangent squared equals outside times whole thing. And so then this is for the secant. All right, so these are the five um, theorems that you're going to be working with today. So if you just like move them over to the side of your desk, because I feel like what we do a lot is we start matching these pictures with what we see on here, and that kind of helps us, especially in the beginning, with what theorems we're going to use. Now, this worksheet is going to be due in class today. So it's going to be due in class, um, and I'm going to grade it for accuracy when I come back. So I'm going to let you do those matching ones. I'm going to start with number 11. All right, so I'm looking at number 11. Um, the directions here were to find the indicated measure. So in this case, my indicated measure is MT. Well, first thing I do is I have a look-see at my green paper, and I see that this looks a whole lot like this. So I've got a radius. And I have a tangent here, and so then that makes this a right angle. And so then that makes this a Pythagorean theorem question. So we can do 12 squared plus x squared equals 15 squared. Or you might notice this is going to be a 3, 4, 5 times 3. So it's a 3, 4, 5, but then times 3. So it's a 9, 12, 15, meaning the piece that I'm missing was 9. So MT equals 9. Um, on number 13 down here, I'm not going to do the whole problem, but just like a comment. On here, you'll see OA is a radius. Well, what else is a radius? 
OC. And we know that all radii are congruent. So if OA is 6, then OC is 6. So then OB is going to be 10. And this is going to be important because this is going to turn into another one of those Pythagorean theorem questions. All right, now on the second page, I'm going to look at number 16. So on number 16, when I come back and I look at my green paper, well, I do have tangents going on, but I don't have any radii. But then I look at this guy. This looks exactly like this little extra picture I told you because you're going to see a lot of that circles inside of polygons. So that's what's happening here. So I know in my circle inside of a polygon, so I'm going to enhance my tangents here, that this piece is equal to this piece, this piece is equal to this piece, and then this piece is equal to this piece. So here, if this is 6, this is 6. Well, this whole thing is 9, and that piece is 6, which leaves this guy to be 3, so this guy is 3. Well, this whole thing is 8, and that piece is 3, so this guy has to be 5, so this guy has to be 5. So then they want to know the perimeter here. Well, it's going to be 2 times 3 plus 5 plus 6. So that's going to be 3 plus 5 is 8, plus 6 is 14, times 2 is... 28. And that's how you would do all three of these, 15, 16, 17, is you just like find a corner and you just start working your way around until you've got all of them. All right, let's look directly below that one at number 19. So number 19 um, it tells us that our lines are tangent. Now we are looking for x. So on this one, okay, so I have these two. My first thought is actually this one because I'm like, okay, like this looks a lot like it. Okay, so then these two pieces are equal. Well, knowing those two pieces are equal doesn't really help me because I'm looking for angles and this has nothing to do with angles. So I guess I kind of have to use this one. Well, what did this say? This says that radii are perpendicular to tangents. Well, do I have any radii and tangents? I do because I have this one here and I have this one here. And then I know this has one, two, three. This has four sides. Four-sided shapes add up to 360. So X is going to be 360 minus 130 and then minus 90 minus 90 minus 180 because that's what 90 plus 90 is and so then that will be 50 degrees all right let's go down we're going to do number 22 and then number 21. all right so looking at these looking at our theorems so i look and this one is the one that's popping out to me because again i've got radii and tangents so that makes this guy a right angle. And then I see here, this is 3 plus 7, so this is 10. And then this is a radius, so this is a radius, so this guy is 3. So this is just going to be another Pythagorean theorem. 3 squared plus x squared equals 10 squared. So 9 plus x squared equals 100. So x squared equals 91, and then 91 I cannot break, so this is just the square root of 91. All right, let's back this over, look at number 21. All right, so on number 21, again, we're looking at the same picture. So this is a right angle. This is going to be Pythagorean theorem. So x squared plus 8 squared equals, and then here, my hypotenuse, well, I know that it's the whole thing. So like here, it was 3 plus 7 equals 10. So this is going to be x plus 2, which is, well, x plus 2. So then this is going to be x plus 2 squared. Now remember, when you have x plus 2 squared, this is not x squared plus 4. This is the same as if I had x plus 2 times x plus 2. So x times x is x squared. x times 2 is plus 2x. Two, 2 times x is plus 2x. Two, 2 times 2 is plus 4. This is x squared plus 64 over here. All right, now minus x squared minus x squared, that'll cancel. So I have 64 equals 4x plus 4, subtract 4. So 60 equals 4x, so then x would equal 15. And yes, that bell was in the video. That was not your real bell. Don't go anywhere. All right, and then on the last page, now you can see by looking at all of these pictures on the last page that you're going to be focused on these three theorems. And again, it's just a lot of picture matching. So we have to just look. So I'm going to do 28, 29, and 30 with you. 
So if I look at number 28, well, I've got two chords, so I have to look at the one that has two chords. So part times part equals part times part. So that's going to be 9 times x equals 3 times 12. So that's 9x equals 36. Divide by 9, x equals 4. Let's look at the next one. All right, so this one, this is like theorem 16. So this one is, we have a tangent and then we have an out, uh, secant. So this is going to be tangent squared equals outside times whole thing. So x squared equals 100. So square root of that, x equals 10. All right, and then last one, number 30, looks like number 15 here. So we've got two secants. So outside times whole thing equals outside times whole thing. So 3 times 8 equals 4 times x. So that's going to be 24 equals 4x. So x equals 6. So on all of these, you should be able to match the pictures. Now I will tell you to be careful with some of them, like so for example, like number 38. So it's going to be outside times whole thing. Well, my whole thing here is 10 plus 10 is 20. And then here, my outside is 8. My whole thing is, since we did 10 plus 10 equals 20, this is going to be 8 plus x. So then this, well, I'm going to write it as x plus 8 because it's just proper math grammar. x plus 8. So make sure you're not multiplying those things because it's going to be like the same right here. Like this whole is going to be x plus 1.6. All right, so again, this worksheet is due in class today. You're going to turn it into the sorter. It's going to be graded for accuracy. And then you have your theorem sheet that have your extra information on there so make sure that you use them. I would like always have my green paper out on my desk while I'm working on my assignment. And then I will check both sets of notes in class next time along with at the beginning remember don't forget to go back and do these four sorry these four because um, I will check that you did these as well and then we'll move on to the last four next class. Alrighty so then I will see you on Thursday.